I'm and I'm back with another Front Row Talk podcast, the podcast with expensive opinions. Before I start, make sure you subscribe, you like, you comment, and you share this video. Make sure you check the description down below where I have a link for my Instagram and my TikTok, also my Twitter. Uh, make sure you go interact with those where um, I post, um, you know, my own personal stuff and any updates at a podcast or whatever the case may be. Before I get started, make sure you tune into last episode, episode 116, if I'm not mistaken, where I talked about um, the NBA Finals. Uh, I think Boston was up 2-0, so, you know, my, my, my takes and stuff were a bit different. But now, um, NBA Finals is done, NBA season is done. So for this episode, episode 117, I'm going to be talking about uh, how the Finals finish um, and my thoughts on it. So let's get straight into it. So... Um, for those who don't know, which you probably will know by now, the Boston Celtics are 2024 NBA champions. Um, to get started, uh, let's just say my pick was right. Uh, probably yours was as well. Uh, I did have them in six. I didn't think they were gentlemen sweep or in other words, winning five games. Um, I don't think anybody would have probably had them, you know, winning in five games. Uh, I'd expect the series to go six games, probably even seven, but I had them in six. Um, I ha- I know Bo- I knew Boston was gonna win though because they're just the best team all around. Um, now to get more into detail with it, uh, to start more so with the winners, I feel like we should speak about them first. Um, Boston was just the you could say the best team all throughout uh, 2024 season. Um, they put another banner up, so they, that makes them the team, the franchise with the most NBA champions chips ever. Um, second place is uh, the Lakers with 17. So Lakers fans and Boston fans was going at it for a couple of years. Who got the 18th banner first? So if you're a Boston fan, I know you definitely, you know, you feel proud to be a Boston fan today. Um, and yeah, uh, shout out to uh, Jalen Brown, one of my favorite players. He won Finals MVP. Uh, it's funny too. I I find it funny because games like two games one two three, I guess you could say, everybody knew like all right Jalen Brown is clear you know Finals MVP. Of course you gotta win four games um, to win a series. So the series wasn't over at that time. It could have changed. Uh, game four, um, Boston lost by a lot. It was bad. Um, that's when it became three one. But it's like. Tatum and Brown didn't really have a good game that game. They actually didn't play a big chunk of the fourth quarter because they were down by a lot. So till then, Brown was still, you know, the finals MVP because I test said it all. I mean, true shooting said it all. He was just, you know, having good games and, you know, he was having good field goal percentage as well. Um, and then game five comes along. Tatum did a his thing i can't lie uh what i will say is tatum was you know effective in many ways so just because you know uh, uh brown had better games than him doesn't mean tatum wasn't being effective uh but what i'm trying to get at is the fact that um brown won finals mvp and now everybody just kind of not everybody but a lot of people just started like questioning it or whatever i just felt like people were okay with saying oh yeah he can win it but not okay with accepting that he actually won it because probably in the back of their heads, they was probably thinking like, yeah, he could win it, but we know it's going to Tatum. Uh, a lot of people, you know, um, uh, compared it to when uh, Iggy <laughs> won the finals MVP over Curry. I think that's a bit of a stretch because um, Tatum's field goal percentage was bad. <laughs> it was horrible. Um, I think it was like 39%. Um, you just can't win, you know, uh, NBA finals like that. They started comparing it with Kobe's in 2008 or something like that. It was just Twitter was doing its thing, fans were doing their thing. Um, and a lot of people disagreed. And I mean, what can I really say? What I will say is though, is, is that Jalen Brown played his ass off. Yeah, he played his ass off, pause. But he did his thing. Um, that doesn't mean Tatum didn't do his thing. They both played great. I mean, they went up 3-0 for a reason. Um, and it's just not Jason Tatum and, and, and Um, The Boston Celtics is not just Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Shout out to um, Derek White. Shout out Porzingis. He came out crazy game one. He was questionable. And off rip, he dropped, what, like 20-something. 
And I think either game one or two, Drew Holiday dropped a triple-double. I think it was game two, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, the whole Boston Celtics lineup was, you know, they came to play. They knew what they had to do. They didn't play with their food, and they took a quick 3-0 lead. By then, we knew it was done. Only delusional Mad fans or Luka fans were trying to entertain the whole 3-1 comeback, 3-0 comeback, which I'm not mad at. I mean, you're a fan of the team. You're supposed to go you know, for them until, you know, the last second on the clock uh, of the fourth quarter, I guess you could say. Uh, but, yeah, shout out to Derek White. Shout out to Drew Holiday. Um, shout out to Porzingis. Um, Derek White actually left game five with a chip tooth, but at least he got a ring. So, I mean, you know, just go get an implant on that tooth or whatever the case may be and keep it pushing. But, you know, them guys did they think. And shout out to my guy, Al Horford. Um, you guys probably like, damn, why Al Horford? He's the first Dominican player ever to win an NBA championship. He did it for the motherland. This, uh, this does not make me a Boston Celtics fan, but I am proud that, you know, that uh, there's a Dominican NBA champion. Um, did it at 38 years old. And he did his thing. Um, he actually did his thing back in 2022 um, when he went against my Warriors. Uh, he's a good role player. I mean, you, you you could tell he 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 does his job because he'll hit the open shots he has to hit. He'll get a couple of rebounds. He might get a block or, or whatever the case may be. But you you at some key moments at a the game you feel his presence and and key runs. I mean, basketball is a game of runs, so and key runs or whatever you will feel his presence. He, he'll probably make two or three threes bring the team up by however much they was up or bring you back into a game. So shout out to Al Horford. He, you know, he got a ring. Uh, respects to him. Um, and yeah, uh, that's really it. Um, that whole Boston Celtic franchise from the head coach to the G GM to everybody, they all, like, it was, it's, it's a lot of videos out there breaking it down. If you go and see them, you see, you know what I'm talking about. But they all put themselves in a position to be able to, you know, come and get this ring that they just got. And who's to say that they can't make a deep run next season? Um, if the East stays just like how it is, which it may not, a couple moves may, <clears throat> may be made, excuse me. But if the East stays sim similar to something like this, I, I, I have the Celtics making a deep run as well. Um, they're a really good team. They play together. They've been good all season. Um, and yeah, I mean, I guess... People could bring in Tatum into that top five, top ten league convo. Um, some people may still not, but, I mean, some people may try to use the, oh, he's not a final MVP, how we put him top five in NBA, whatever, whatever, whatever. But some people could entertain him. I mean, he finally won a ring, and, you know, now he, he just could put that behind him and try to get another one. But he finally got the taste of what being an NBA champion is. Now, moving on to the Mavericks, um, I'm not going to lie, I'm not a Kyrie hater, but damn, Kyrie cannot play in Boston. Um, ever since he stepped on the lucky in the middle of the, of, the, of, the, um, of the court, it's just been bad for him. He did have good games, but in Boston, he was just not showing up. I don't know if it was something mental. I don't know if it was just if people who believe in bad luck or whatever the case may be is, but he... he him and Boston don't don't go together. Um, phenomenal player, phenomenal player. But it's just he just didn't show up in Boston and this series only had two, you know, locations, either Boston or Mavs, that or Texas, Dallas. So you you can't just go home and play good and not go away and play bad. Especially when you're Kyrie Irving and eyes of others, most skilled player ever. Most skilled player ever. So, um, yeah, I came to Kyrie can't play in Boston. Can that change? Of course it could change, but it sucks because it had to be now. You know, he, he was close to a second championship. He was actually in the finals with another great player. Um, moving on to Luka, that other great player. Um, Luka did his thing. He did his thing, but I, I will say is if you watched all five games or at least four out of the five, but if you watched all five, you've definitely seen it. But if you've seen four out of the five or whatever, you've seen that they made Luca make tough decisions. And Luca's 
a great decision maker. But what I'm trying to say is, is those tough decisions, whether it were turnovers or fouls or a bad shot from Luca, he took a couple questionable shots. Or it, they seemed quite. It's, it's so tough to get at Luca sometimes because he's such a great player. Anybody make mistakes in the NBA, but he's a good player. He's he's been doing it since like what 16 years old so he know what it is to make tough decisions what i will say is that the, the boston defense definitely made him question certain you know um plays or whatever the case may be and then that led them to go into runs um he he would take a lot of shots but that's probably because you know probably nobody else was knocking shots down um yeah i I, I can't really remember what I said going into this series um, a couple episodes back. But, um, yeah, the, the Mavs role players, they they didn't. The best series was that OKC series, I'm not going to lie. They showed up for that series, but they, they, they didn't show up for the finals. I just showed up for that OKC series. And you need to. I mean, to win, you clearly need to. Um, P.J. Washington wasn't really felt. Like, his presence wasn't felt in this Boston series. Um, Green wasn't really, like, it was just, like, eh. You know what I'm trying to say? It was just basically Luka and Kyrie. And a little bit of Gafford, I guess you could say. Lively did his thing. Shout out to Lively. But, yeah, it was just, it wasn't enough to beat Boston. Boston was just too... And it's funny, because... After, like, from seeing game one, I was like, yes, yeah, it's over. That, you know, so, um, Celtics. Mavericks don't stand a chance against this Boston team. I already knew where it was going to go. And that's easy to say. I could have been totally wrong. But I already knew, like, how together Boston plays. How, how, I wouldn't say, I'm not saying that the Mavs don't play as a team. But it's just, Boston is just a way better team. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, and yeah, I was I, after game one, I knew what it was gonna be. I didn't think they were winning five, but they didn't, and you know. Um, but yeah, I I know it may be probably frustrating for Luca, but he'll probably be back. I mean, the West gets harder and harder every year, and be a stat. But he's a, he's good enough to you know help himself and his team get into that you know position again, the NBA Finals. Probably not next season. Probably into the season after that or three seasons from now. Who knows? Nobody can tell the future. But what I will say is is um Boston just played way better. Um, way better. Uh and yeah, I mean that's all I could really say. Uh if if you watch the series, you you'd know where, where the Mavs went wrong. Um they they just they couldn't rebound better than Boston. Um they they didn't go in a on as much runs i felt like luca became a bit passive and then his teammates weren't finishing it or they forced luca into tough shots and his team wasn't being f so it was just it was a lot of things that weren't clicking together and then that just favored boston and boston just did what they had to do but yeah i mean that's really it the nba season is over um i did not think the celtics would be the champions but they are I'm not mad at it. It is what it is. I don't hate Boston. Um, it is what it is. I don't hate no play on Boston. Uh, actually, I, one of my favorite players is in Boston. Shout out Jalen Brown again, man. He did his thing. Uh, shout out Al Horford. And um, yeah, for those Luka fans, Maverick fans, just if if y'all keep Luka, which I most likely will, he he'll definitely try his best to be back in that position, or he will be back. When who knows? But. You know, we have a lot more NBA seasons to come up. Um, and this is really it. Uh, it's really it for this episode, episode 117. Um, the finals, though, it had no aura. No aura. I mean, you go up 3 0, then game four, Dallas wins by like 30, 25 plus. And then game five, it was just like. So it was like, at no point, it was like. 1-1 one, one or 2-2 two, two or like you know what i'm trying to say it was it wasn't even i guess you could say it was just we're beating you badly and then we're up 3-0 we know the series is over then game four it's like you know but that's what i can really say about it um it's really it for this episode make sure you subscribe you like you comment and you share this video 
check the description down below where i have my link for my instagram and my tiktok make sure you subscribe we're seven 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 subscribers away from 100 i had to say it three times because we're that close um and yeah it's really it god willing and i'll be here for next week episode 118 uh your boy salsita is out